G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake, and today I'm going to show you how to build the wizard tower that I demonstrated in the last video. I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video, or there's a link in the description if you want to check it out first. I'll also run through a couple of options to increase the number of zombies coming up so it's more combat focused, and how to stop them coming up as well, and turn it into an AFK base. Alright, let's get started. First thing we've got to build is a pillar straight up the middle with the ladder attached. I'm going to do this one about 15 blocks high, which is a little bit shorter than the one I demonstrated in the last video. So this is going to be more targeted at a lower zombie count for Horde Knight. Maybe a 32 or a 16 rather than the 64. You can see I'm just whacking in a ladder every 5 blocks or so. That'll allow us just to hold steady on the side and run back down. You can do this any way you like. This is just how I like to do it. Add in a couple more ladders here. And then drop down the bottom. Starting from two up, obviously, so that the zombies can't climb up. And there is our pillar. The first part of the base is complete. Now that we've got our pillar and our ladder, it's time to start building the ramp up. We're going to use the usual cube blocks, as well as these cobblestone sheets. The sheets will attach the ramp as it goes up to the pillar to ensure the stability stays good. Starting three blocks out, or two blank spaces and then a block, we're going to start to build our ramp up. We're just going over one and then up one all the way along. We need to go again three blocks out from the pillar, two blank spots, and then the actual block. Just need to join these onto the edges. Do this slowly and carefully so that we don't fall down too much. And when we get level with the pillar, that's when we need to pause. And I might just turn on some stability here so that we can see that at the moment it's the darker orange, not quite into the red. But once we come back up, I might just turn stability off again and then attach a sheet here and one below. And then the same on the inside of the actual blocks. That then attaches the ramp to the pillar, and if we look at the stability, instead of the darker orange, it's now the light yellow. It's not as impressive at this point of the ramp, since we're still fairly close to the ground and it's supported off the ground as well. But as we keep going up, you'll see we go over one, over two, over three, and then turn the corner. And do the same, and as we get almost to the middle we're going to hit the limit of our stability you can see they're starting to go yellow and if we try to add another one now it will all fall down but if we have a look at the stability it's dark red as you can see turn that back up again and if we add the sheets we start on the min inside first so that we don't drop the uh, the ramp down and attach it like so and then have a look at stability again you can see it's nice and yellow so that's how we keep this going up and you can go up as far as you want but for this one we're just going to do the 15 blocks for the last part now we just need to get it up level with the top of the pillar i think we need one more and there we are that's the right height now we just need to join it up let's just go across a couple and there we are back down and we can see this is what it should look like after we've done our first spiral ramp here's what it looks like after two ramps are complete adding in the third ramp and finally here's all four ramps complete now that we've got our ramps complete it's time to head back up to the top and finish off the rooftop or the floor Rooftop of the spiral staircase, floor of the ramp room, where the zombies will run up and congregate onto the ramp up into the combat cage. Just going to add in the floor, making sure that we don't cover up any of the space above the ramps. And we can just add in a little one of these blocks out to the side, just because we're going to need them in a minute. From there, we might just summon in a few zombies, just to give things a test. Get their attention and they should all run over if we just pop down this ladder just have a look we're all coming up which is good one of them's fallen off already and where's he gonna go he's gonna go over to that next ramp which shows that they're not preferring any one ramp over the others which is good 
I better head up, just because they're going to come up and hit me from behind if I don't. Pretty happy with that. Looks like everything's working. The other two will be on their way up somewhere. So let's move on. Now that we've completed that little test, let's just finish off this flooring. We need to go out one around the far side of the ramp which is going to be the wall of our combat tower section. And there we go, that's what that should look like once we've finished our floor. From there, we just need to build it up a little bit. One difference here is that we don't want cute blocks for the corner pieces. You can see that I'm leaving them and not filling them in as we go. And once we finish with the wall, I will add them back in afterwards, but we're going to use a ramp block turned on its side just to give the top section of the tower a little bit of shape. And there we go. The first level of the wall is complete. Now we can do the same, building up the second level of the wall. Ooh. Now, as you can see, we've hit the limit of our stability. So what we don't want to do from here is keep going. Otherwise you are going to get something like this. So what we actually need to do now is pause on the building of our walls and head back down and build some of the actual tower walls, which is what's going to give us some extra stability up on the combat cage. To start building our tower walls, we need to come out three blocks and over two blocks to mark out the corner pieces that are actually going to provide the majority of the stability. We're then going to go up five blocks one, two, three, four, on top of the one, and then mark that across, and that's going to be our arch area for the entrance to the base. We're then going to run this wall all the way to the top, level with the floor of the ramp room above. is now level. That's all we need to do. From here we can just hop on across and up and in. We then need to repeat that process for the other three walls. There's wall two, wall three hidden at the back, and wall four over on the right. From there it's time to start filling in the side of the tower walls with the diagonal pieces that join up the existing walls together. We're going to use ramp blocks again, alternating them between facing flat side out and flat side in. Just like this, once we find the rotation advanced will help. There we go. And we basically run this same sort of process all the way up, but we need to stop just a little bit short of the top. And I'll get to why in a second. The goal here as we move up is to fill up all of them as shown. But as we've got one block below, this is where we need to start modifying the build. Where we need to leave the outside pieces as blank and just fill in the inside pieces. So one, two, jump across, three are the inside pieces. And then for the outside pieces, we actually need a new block. This is to make the top section of the, I think rampart is the right word, slope outward. So we need, there it is, the ramp corner filler. And we need to rotate that around so that it slopes upwards and outwards, which I think, we just jump across here to get a better look at it. It looks like that. Placing that in there, we can do all four of those. And in between them, we need another new block. We need the corner 
That's the ramp corner block, which we need to rotate again to match the slope and pop that in like that. That should give us a nice outward sloping corner at the top of the wall. From there, we need to then just pop in the outward facing. Except I think I've messed that up. I think it was already on the right rotation. Let's get that back again. We need the outward facing ramp blocks because the inward facing ones are now going to just be cube blocks to join up with the rest of the platform. That provides the additional stability that we're looking for to be able to complete the rest of the tower. We can also add in the outward section of the rampart for the flat sections of wall. To do that, we start with the ramp one block down from the top and again, slope that just outwards like that. Put in five of these. Like that. And then wait, I think that's one too many. Yes, that shouldn't be up level. Just knock that one out again. One second. Because that's where the diagonal part joins up with the rest of it. That's where we need the ramp corner again. And on top here, we just use regular cubes. And in this part, we just need one of our ramp blocks. And if we pop out and have a look, there we are. One nice outward sloping top of the tower. From there, we just need to repeat that three more times for the other diagonal facing walls. And at the end of that, we should have a tower that looks something like this. Now that we've fixed up our stability issues, we can continue on with building the ramp room, filling in the last couple of blocks on this wall. And then starting the, that's one level one, two, and we want the third level of wall on top, which is also gonna double as our floor to the combat cage. And there we are, that level three is complete. And now we can build up the central pillar up to the level of the combat cage. Putting in a couple of blocks and ladders. One more. There we are. And that is our floor. So we can now grab the cube. Stop and admire the view for a second. But uh, grab the cube and fill in the floor, starting level with the pillar, just to get some stability out to the walls. And then fill in the rest of the floor. The one thing we've got to make sure is we leave room for the ramp in the right spot. And we want that to be in front of the ladder so that we've got plenty of space. So we fill in this behind the ladder. We want that back wall to be the one with the ramp. So we're just going to fill in these two rows and leave this one for our ramp. So to build the ramp, we just need our ramp incline. Rotate that around, put in two of those and one more. Let's get it up to the right level and just add in a couple of filler blocks just to make it look pretty. Since it's hanging off the wall, it doesn't really need them for stability, but it helps to make it look good. And then add in this just to seal it off. We also want to make the zombies run all the way around and only have one point up. Otherwise, they're going to start to get stuck underneath that ramp incline and hit it a little bit for some damage that we don't want. So we're just going to fill in these. I did build in the original video a bit of a room in there, but that doesn't actually serve a purpose. So for this one, we're just going to fill them in with cube blocks. Bring this over again, a couple of spots. The one thing we do have to make sure is that we seal off their access to the ladder. Otherwise, they're just going to run up and use the ladder to get up to us and hit us. So we want them to go up inside the cage. So we're just going to grab a plate. Rotate that around. There we go, seal off the ladder. And then just to make it look nice, we're gonna use the plate ramp to bring that down nice and smooth. Again, just so there's no little edges that the zombies can get stuck on. We don't want them hitting on those plates. 
this just makes it a little bit smoother and less likely that they're going to destroy the one spot we would then mean that they could just walk straight up behind us and we might just add in as well ramp outside corner fuel there we go just to give the zombies easy access and again make it nice and smooth so they don't get stuck and hit anything and that is the floor of our combat cage already time to build the rest of the combat cage room to do that we're going to go up five ramp blocks on each corner just to set the height copy the rotation one two three four five and the last one that's what it should look like once that's done for the back wall here because the there's nothing special going on there we're just going to fill that in with cube box and that's going to be our back wall for the side walls we do have a little bit we're going to go in three and leave a gap and then do the other three that's going to be the entrance and exit out the side you know also leave that gap three high but then fill it in for the top two rows and there we can repeat that on the other side and there we have it two walls are complete all we need to do is add in a little bit of an arch block where is it there it is window arch top just to give the uh, entrance a little bit of a shape there we are for the roof there's nothing special to it just fill in the whole roof with cube blocks all right time for the fun stuff let's build the cage to do that we're going to go and put in some blocks in the back corner I'm going to cover up there the zombies don't hit that one that's fine they've still got plenty of room see to get up and through From there, we're going to grab the single pole and mark out the edge of the front of the combat area. Three poles high. You could go four if you want. I've just done it this way and we'll block off the fourth with a different bit in a second. From there, we then use, this is my sort of standard melee cage setup with the double poles rotated sideways like this so that we can get to the dogs. Use another layer up high on the third level. We're going to use the pillar 0.05 double, which is this one here, as that gives us just that little bit of extra space to do some meleeing if we go that way. For the top, we're going to use the cube one quarter side centered. This is just going to simulate a wooden beam across the middle, and that also doubles as a block to block any zombies from managing to get over the top. And then we just need some sides on this so they can't walk around there. To do that, we're going to use some plate ramps again. If we can find those, there we are. We're just going to spin them around and again, just to provide a nice smooth slope and try and make it look as nice as possible. Put those in there, spin it around, do the other side. That just sits in nicely behind those poles that we put in there originally. And we just need to set these up on the outside so that we get them in the right spot. And there, and then go off the roof. And then spin it around to. And there we have it. That is the combat cage completed. You can obviously put in your generator banks and electric fences in here still. There's room for one, two, three, four of whatever you want really um obviously i went for electric fences but that's up to you moving on with the construction of the window just going to pop in a couple of rows of cube blocks here that'll frame out the window and then put a couple of pillars just on the left and the right as well like so and then that's ready for decoration. So for the pretty window up in the combat cage, I'm going to grab a couple of stained glass 
window panels. Sorry, plates. Put them on the inside, rotate it outwards like this. Then we can grab some trellis blocks under the decoration tab. Again, rotate them around facing outwards on the inside blocks. And in the middle, we're just going to put a couple of pole doubles. Two there. Two here. And two in the middle, which we can still walk through. There we are. That's the basics of the window. Then we just want to frame it with some poles around the left and the right and the top. In the corners, we're just going to grab one of these pole corners, pop it there and on the other side. And that's ready for painting. Now that we've finished with our display window, we need to provide access to the outside of the tower. To do that, I just need to break out this block and replace it with some stairs down. Then we're going to add in our diagonal stairs, which is the stairs field diagonal one. Put one in here and here. Then grab the second part of that block set and pop that there and a cube in underneath. And we have some stairs down. While we're outside, we might just add in the framing for the outside of the window. To do that, we need the wedge tip, or uh, wedge 60 tip half, and pop that in across the top. And then the same version, but the outside corner. And we can pop that there. And there. Just watching our footing here. And we'll pop in a bowl to do the sides. And the other side. Then the bottom. And a pole corner to finish it off. From there we just need to finish off the other stairs on the other side. And then head around the back, ready to do the ladder access to the roof. Before we do the roof ladder access though, what we might do is add in the melons for the top of this tower. To do that, we need these cube half blocks, placed like so, and the cube one quarter blocks placed in between. For the diagonal sections, we need this ramp incline half left. Rotate that around to match the diagonal angle, like so, and place one, two, and three. In between, we need the ramp incline as the full size block. If I can find it. Yeah, where is it? There it is. Match the rotation and pop that in there and there. And lastly, we just need the filler block for the left again. Ramp incline half filler left. Filler half left, sorry. Match the rotation and pop them in like so. Repeat that four times all the way around the outside and our tower will have our nice merlons. One more thing I noticed while we were doing that little panning around the outside is that I haven't done the trim block for these archways. So what we need to do is grab our window trim. The trick with the window trim is to make sure that you get it the right way around. There's actually, it's not a square block, it's rectangular. So you need to make sure that you've got the flat side like that facing outwards. If you do it the wrong way around, it like that, that's the wrong way. You've got it long and thin. You can see here it point, sticks out just a little bit further than the one on the other side. So we need to keep rotating until we get it flat like that. That's the way it needs to be. Otherwise it won't match the top section, which will be the arch trim, which we can put up the top there. Do the same on the other side, of course. And there we go. And then now we can move around and do our rooftop ladder access. We want to be third block in so that we don't conflict with anything else. Run that ladder up. And there we go. Again, we can do the melons at the top. For these ones, I just went with the cube one quarter all the way around. I'm going to do that one. We're going to skip that one because it's where one of the fancy bits will go. Again, skip the middle one. 
these in. There we go. Last one. There we go. And then just on the edges, we want to put that same ramp incline half left. Rotate it around. I think we can copy rotation. Pop those in there. Oops. Don't know why that one didn't work. Stay with me, computer. There we go. And there we are. All right, time for the fancy bits. I don't know what else to call these, but there are little arches that make our wizard tower. So we start with our wedge 60 tip, move to the wedge 60. Then we're going to need some frames to help us build this, just to get us out and about and higher than the build level that we're at. So here we're going to put in a ramp, rotate that around so that it slopes upwards like that. Then on top, we're going to put in the wedge narrow high with the slope like this and on the back of it we're going to put a wedge narrow tip with the point facing downwards like so on top of it we're going to put a wedge narrow middle same rotation and on the back we're going to put a cube 0.25 meter which i have no idea where that one is we're just going to search for it and rotate it around to match the back like that now i need to get a little bit higher again on the inside, we're going to put a cube half block. Like this one. There we are. And on the back, we want another wedge narrow tip, but this time the point's going to be upwards. Like that. From there, we need a wedge 60 outline. Ah, uh, sorry, wedge 60 incline. Not sure what a wedge 60 outline is. Take that around and pop it there. And we've run out of height, so we're just going to come back inside, grab all of our frames, put them back over here. And then we just need the filler block. Which one's this? It's the ramp incline filler. Flip it around. There we are. And pop that there. And finish with a ramp incline. And there we go. First of our curvy pieces done. Repeat that three more times on each of the other edges and the top of the base should look like this. For the sphere in the middle, the process is to build two of the five meter domes on top of each other, but with the first dome inverted. So you start building with the top block and then do the middle row and then the bottom row on top of that. Then once that's done and it looks a little bit like this, you build a second dome starting with the bottom row and finishing, of course, with the top on top. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube for how to build the dome if you're having trouble. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that here, but please let me know in the comments below if you're having issues with this part. Of course, it's purely decorative as well, so feel free to skip it for your horde base. It's not worth the effort. Once the sphere is done, though, here's how it'll look. Now that we've finished up on top with the sphere and the decorations, let's head back down to one of the things that we skipped early on when building the walls, which was the little archway that I added to the entrance, just to make it look a little bit better. Instead of just the square entrance here, we're going to add in the arch 3M window corner. Pop one like that, one rotated around the other way, and then the centerpiece. And on the edges, we just need our arch 3 meter tip which is here. Rotate that around onto the wall, like that, and opposite wall as well. Don't worry about it, the fact that it looks a little bit funky like that for now, we're gonna paint it later. But that's how we make our nice little arch entrance ways. As our final decoration, we wanna add in a window. To do that, we're gonna go up seven blocks. If we can get it, there we go and grab our pickaxe and knock out two blocks. First one here, and one more above. We're going to pop in our stained glass plates, rotate it to the back, like so. And then similar to the main window that we did up on the combat cage, we're going to grab our wedge 60 tip halves, one there to the corners, 
Grab some poles for the edges. And we're just going to drop down a frame here so that we can, or two even, and pop in the bottom one. And instead of using the corner, we're just going to extend it out by using a pole half. Copy that rotation. No, that doesn't work, sorry. And flip that around. Pop in there. And there, like that. Just to give it a bit of extra oomph. Then come around for the inside. Just going to scoot up this one. So that we're over close to it. Grab again the pole. Put in one on the bottom, two on the sides, if we can get there. There we are, other side, one on the top. And then we're just going to use the pole corner to fill it in and just make it a little rectangle. Again, just adds a little bit of dimension. Makes the window look a little bit nicer than just having the stained glass plate sitting there in the middle of nowhere. Repeat that three more times. And your base should look like this. For the last piece of functionality for the base, we need to provide the extra protection for the ramps by hollowing out the basement. This would definitely be easier to build at the beginning of the base, but I'm a glutton for the punishment. And I wanted to show you how you can do it at the end of the build. Start by just knocking out these blocks here and adding in this one there, adding in our cobblestone cubes. You can see that this hasn't destroyed any of the base, even though we did remove those blocks underneath those supporting pillars. Repeat this on all four sides and you'll get the base looking like this. And from there, we're going to go down three blocks on one side, on the inside, and four blocks on the outside. I'm going to dig out the middle, even that up, take out that fourth block here spin around and then build our ramp or staircase out like this. Grab the stairs, rotate it around and then slowly work our way upwards, digging out the dirt as we go. This will provide the exit for the zombies that fall down from the top or from anywhere up the ramp. We want to give them a nice easy way out with no obstructions so that they don't attack as much. Hopefully any of the base, but as little of the base as possible. Again, repeat this on each of the four sides, or three more sides. From there, we're going to take off the top layer of the snow, all the way around the inside of the base. I find it's harder if you try and dig down all at once to work out where you are relative to the rest of it. So I'm going to do this layer by layer. Basically, what we're going to do here is go down to the bedrock and use that as the bottom level. We're going to leave the one piece of dirt underneath this middle pillar, and I'm guessing you know why, because if we knock it out, we might have some issues with collapse. But until then, we're just going to basically empty this out so that we've got a nice pit for the zombies to fall into, so that they stay on the paths that we want them to stay on. Once you finish with that, Here's how it'll look once the first layer has been removed. Here's how it looks after the second layer has been done. After the third layer has been done. And once we're down to bedrock after the fourth layer has been done. You can see here that everybody, everything's still standing, which is good. Even though it's only kind of supported by the walls around the outside and that central pillar. If we flip it over and have a look at the stability mode, you can see that the blocks that used to be supported on the ground are no longer, and they're a little bit dark red, very close to black. So we might just add in a little bit of support for those. You can also see that the rest of the base is very well supported by the diagonal walls and the two cube blocks running up either side of the window walls. So what we might do is just support this bit a little bit better from the bottom, and then the green central pillar is supporting the rest. So turn stability back off again, grab a cube block, and pop it in just like whoop, there and there and there and there that should have added some extra stability to those bottom areas now that they're supported from the side 
The next trick is protecting all of this dirt. We don't want this dirt to get knocked out, given that that's providing all the stability for the walls above it. So to do that, we're just going to dig out each of these columns one by one. Like so. Extend that down to bedrock. And then do the same all the way around. There we go. That's finished. Here's how it looks. Next, we want to cover up some of the diagonal sections. To do that, we're going to use the diagonal plate. If I can find that. There it is. And we just need to rotate that around so that it covers it nicely like that. And we can just cover up that wall. Again, this is just to stop the zombies from having a go. Or if we got really unlucky and a cop fell down multiple times and then blew up down here, hopefully those walls will take most of the blast. Here's how it looks once all of them are done. Nice and solid. Next, we have the fun part, replacing the middle pillar. To do that, what we're going to do is add in these wooden frames down to bedrock on the ladder, which then runs all the way to the top. And we're going to just remove these four bits of dirt and replace them with cobblestone. And we can grab our frames back. And we might also add some reinforcement around this middle pillar. Again, we really don't want to lose this during a horde night. So I like to use the ones where you can actually see the difference by indenting them a little bit. So I'm just going to do three high, like so, all the way around. You could go even more and add in the corners as well if you wanted to, but this should just hopefully give it a bit of extra protection. Now, let's just head back upstairs and check what happened while we added those blocks in and destroyed the support for the central pillar, which is always a bit of a risk. And those are look okay. Oh, no. We have had a little bit of a collapse there. There, we've lost a couple of blocks. Three. If we just pop up here. We go one, two, three, maybe four blocks. Here, we've lost four blocks. So just be aware you're going to lose a little bit of the sphere. And if you're watching the full video before you go and do the build, you might want to do that central pillar replacement before you build the sphere. The rest of the base will be okay. That one is the one little weak link. So I'll just fix that up and then we're good to go. Now that our base is complete, it's time for a paint job. I'm going to start with these little windows here that we want to look a little bit more like entrances to a tower. We're going to grab the metal reinforced wood and do that on those. That's all we needed on those. Move on to the ladder. I know I painted this in wood. Was it the polished wood? Can't see the other one. Is that right? That doesn't look right. What was it? Hmm. Let's just go to the wood section. Oh, there it is. Wood oak. That's what I used. I'm not sure why that didn't show in the search, but there we go. Oop. So this is the wood colouring that I used for pretty much all of the wood and the framing throughout. Heading up here, let's paint these up. There we are. While we've got the wood paint, let's do the main display window here. All these pieces we're just going to do with the wood colouring. Get the corners. Like so. And head out onto the balcony. Do the pillars, the, sorry, the double poles. And then turn off the paint everything mode and just do the inside of these. Again, just to make it look a bit like a window ledge. And then we can turn it back on to paint all sides so that we do the framing. Now this is going to do the top of those wedge tips as well, which is going to look a little weird, but we can fix that up in a little bit from the top. There we go. Oop, there's the corners. That's basically how that's going to look. Let's run around the outside and get back up so we can do the top of it now. Oh, it was the shingles, I believe. Where are they? There they are. 
Fingles Asphalt is the ones I use. I didn't use the diamond one, just the regular. And um, yep, I need painting. No, I painted all the sides. I only wanted to paint single side. So I have to fix that up in a sec. We also want the front edge to be painted and the sides as well. Fix this one up in a sec. Let's just do the sides there and there. And then we can grab the paint and fix that. There we go. Main display window done. Going around here, we can do our stairs and our arch or trim for the archway. For that, we use the black granite. Paint all sides again. Do the main four blocks here. And then our trim blocks. Our arch one's a bit weird to be painted sometimes. There we go. There's that one. We can, of course, do the other side later. For the inside of the combat cage, what we want here is the wood across the middle. That's our wood support beam, just to make it look a bit more realistic, hopefully. And for this one, I used the, uh, the curtain trim. Not that one. Fabric blinds, that's it. The fabric blinds. It's a nice white color that I think shows the damage really well, so that as the zombies break it down, it's easy to see. I have trouble sometimes when I use darker colors of realizing that the zombies have done a lot of damage to the blocks and you don't want that to happen and them to break through just because you didn't see it. It also provides a bit of contrast. It's a pretty dark, dismal build, this one, with all the cobblestone. So that sort of helps. Coming around here, we need to grab our wood polish again. Oh, sorry, wood oak again. And up. There we go. And our top section, I'm going to do in any kind of black that you want. For this one today, I think I'll use the black TV screen. Very, very shiny. Possibly a little bit too shiny at times, but it does look pretty cool. This view is a bit of a painful one to paint. You've got to try and get underneath. It's also got all the little pieces. Uh, some of them are quite small that you've got to find. So just going to speed this up a little bit and show you what it looks like when it's done. There we go, I think we're done. Nope. Oh, one little piece to go. And now do our curvy bits. Oh. Did the curvy bits to match. Again, just run that around like that. Same up here. And we're done. And here's what it looks like when we're all done. Notice I didn't show you how I painted those windows, but they're exactly the same as the main window that I did show, just on a smaller scale. Just the wood oak on the inside for the wooden frames and the poles and the asphalt shingles on top. Now I also promised a couple of variations. If you find this a little too effective and not enough zombies are getting up to your combat cage, then what you can do to speed them up is by adding in some ramps, which will mean that there's less jumping for the zombies involved and they will run up and get to you much, much quicker. And because they're running and not jumping, there's, they're not going to stumble and they're not going to fall back down. So basically the zombies will just cruise straight up to you and you can fight them at the top. If you're going to do that, it's probably a little overblown kind of a build. But what you can do is a partial where you go half and half with some ramps and some blocks. Maybe the ramps at the bottom and the blocks at the top to maximize the delay if they do fall down. And that would give you a little more fine-tuned control if you want. Or if you're, if you're doing Horde Nights and you're finding you're not getting enough zombies coming up and you want them a little bit more, but you're not, you don't want to completely overwhelm yourself, then just add in a few ramps to start with and see how that goes rather than just adding ramps all the way up to the top and finding that you get overwhelmed. If we just do a quick test here, once the game keeps up, we can add in some zombies and you'll see that when they come up, there's no pausing, there's no jumping, they're just running faster than I can reorient my camera straight to the top. And then they pop straight out really, really quickly. There's no big delays like there is in the normal one. And 
flip side, if you find that you've got too many zombies coming up and you want to slow things down and turn this into an AFK base, you can either use some blocks that the zombies have a chance of making and will sometimes get across and sometimes won't. Often I use the uh, centered poles for this. Or you can flip it around and go to some blocks that you know that the zombies are nearly always, that are almost never going to make it across. Like the quarter triangles like this. You can set these up so that the zombies still think that they have a path and can make it to the top, but 99 times out of 100 they're going to fall down. And that'll turn this into an almost AFK base. The only thing you're going to have to watch out if you go for that approach is that they don't do too much damage down in the pit below to the foundations and end up bringing the tower down. So I'd... For this base, it is designed for a combat setup, but you can slow them down with, with these sorts of alternate blocks. The other way, of course, that you can slow them down is just build the tower taller. The more blocks that you add, the taller the tower, the more likely that the zombies are to fall down as they jump up and the longer that they will take to get up to you. Well, that concludes this wizard tower build guide. It certainly ended up being a bit bigger than I expected, so hopefully it was useful. Please leave me a like if it was, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks as always for watching, drop me a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. In particular, please give me a shout if you use this tower in game, and I'll leave you today with the exact way to not remove the dirt from underneath the central pillar.